Physicists and engineers often categorize a type of force or dynamics problem as an equilibrium problem. Now, common characteristics of equilibrium problems are the objects are in equilibrium, which means that F net is zero. The forces all bounce out. Now, if F net is zero, then the acceleration must be, well, zero. There's no change in motion. We know that from Newton's second law. And to solve equilibrium problems, we use the same strategies as any of our other force or dynamic problems. That is, a good free body diagram, and then F net equals MA, where in this case, our A equals zero. So there's no new root concepts required to solve equilibrium problems. Let's take a look. For example, a hanging lamp represents a common 1D equilibrium problem. This lamp is hanging by a single chain. So to start the problem, let's draw a good free body diagram of the lamp. The weight of the lamp pulling it down, or FG, and the force from the chain is holding it up. Let's call that FC. We note that the forces are all vertical and we start the equations with F net equals MA in simply the vertical direction. The lamp is in equilibrium, just hanging there, so acceleration is zero. So considering up to be positive, we would just write FC minus FG equals zero, or we can rearrange to FC equals FG and we're ready to plug in some numbers to solve. It's that simple. Now, what if that same lamp was to be hung using two chains like this? Again, we'd start with a good free body diagram, and we had the force of gravity pulling the lamp down, and then two different forces from the chains holding the lamp up. Now, we can see that in this case, the chain forces have both vertical and horizontal components. Thus, this would be a 2D equilibrium problem. And again, let's start with F net equals MA, where A equals zero, equilibrium. So our vector equation would be F1 plus F2 plus FG equals zero. Now we can draw lines over these forces just to remind us that this is a vector addition. Of course, all forces are vectors. But remember, in 1D, we can just plug them straight into the equation, with positives and negatives being used to define the directions. Now this is because there are only two directions possible, positive and negative, representing up and down or left and right, but not a combination of both. In a 2D situation like this, just plugging in the numbers is not going to work, as we have two dimensions involved. To analyze this situation, we have two options, a full vector diagram or components. We'll look at the full vector diagram first. For this method, we take our net force equation here and represent it as a vector addition drawing. F1, drawn at the same angle as in our free body diagram, plus F2, tail to head, and again, same angle as in the free body diagram. And then we add FG to this, straight down, and again, tail to head, and we know it ends up back where we started, as this addition is equal to zero. Remember, it's an equilibrium problem, A equals zero. And we probably have to do a little geometry thinking to determine some more of the angles, in many cases, and then we typically use cosine law and or sine law to solve for our unknowns. Our second method for solving 2D equilibrium problems involves splitting our F net equation into two. One for the horizontal direction or X direction and one for the vertical direction or Y direction. That is, all the forces or components of the forces in the x direction must add up to be, well, 
zero because acceleration is zero. And then all the forces or components of forces in the y direction must also add up to be zero. Instead of drawing a full vector diagram, we just break up all of our forces into components x component and a y component. And then we can plug these components into their respective equation. Now this forms two equations with often two unknowns, and we know that we can solve it then. Now you'd be thinking back to your earlier math and solving linear systems of equations, and you're good to combine the equations and determine the unknown. We often use substitution to combine these equations, and you'll remember that. Now both of these methods for solving 2D equilibrium problems work great. They just use different mathematical tools. The full vector addition method, or trigonometric method, requires more angle geometry to think about. And then we often use cosine and or sine laws. If you choose the component method on the other hand, you'll often stick with the basic trig ratios to determine the components, and then you'll use your knowledge of systems of equations, that is, two equations and two unknowns to be combined and solved using a bit of algebra. Again, either method works great. In some cases, a question might ask you to use a particular method, while in other cases you can choose whichever method you prefer. So choose what works best for you.